seven, eight steps. Outside, two big, two, up. Welcome to another vlog. It is, I think, November 7th. Yeah, it's November 7th and wow, can I talk? It's November 7th and Judy invited me to a little birthday party. Well, I don't know how little this is gonna be because we're going to Double D's and right after work, I just had to start getting ready. So this is my outfit. Actually, hold on. This is my outfit. Okay. How are we gonna do this? This is the outfit. Okay. I don't know how this is gonna look, but I have this paper boy hat, this fur coat, red lips, all that, a little gold jewelry, mixed metal bracelet, mini black dress, some boots, and I'm just gonna drag along my regular, regular, to put this light up too. It doesn't make a difference, oh my gosh. My regular, I have none of my lights up. You know what, whatever. This is the outfit, we're just gonna go. <laughs> we got all dressed up, or I got all dressed up because I got invited out, as I said earlier, by Judy. And then we have this video that we want to film. You guys will see, I'll probably insert it once it's done because I know for a fact she might edit that video before I even put up this vlog. But you know what? This is the life, this is the life, this is. <laughs> Let's cue for the clip. Mm -hmm. Hey y'all, it is another day. Tell me why around 1.30 a.m. this morning, I decided that I wanted to do something different this weekend. It was either between going back to archery or trying out a pole dancing class. And the closest one to me right now is pole dancing. So yo girl will be attending her first pole dancing class today. And I'm really excited. I'm elated about this experience because number one, I am bored running. I get really bored with exercises, so I'm trying to switch it up a little bit. I thought about doing an aerial class or like a spinning class. I think that's what it's called, where you have the ropes and you're just like spinning and whatnot in the air, which looks really fun. But then I was like, mm, pole dancing looks really fun too. And the girls and their cores always looks like top notch and I don't have upper body strength. So if this is another way I could incorporate a proper upper body and um, core workout, then I will take that opportunity. And also I just want to spin like a ballerina on that pole girl. <laughs> I always thought it was a really pretty sport well can i describe it as a sport it's still well it's a really intensive activity i know that for sure because again i don't have upper body strength honey growing up all i did were sports that required a lot of lower body um exertion is that the word lower body strength like soccer track ballet dance the whole works and with all of that, I'm using my lower body more than my upper body. So going to my first pole dancing class today, not sure how it's gonna go. I don't know if I could film or not. If I can, I'll insert some clips, but I just be doing shit. <laughs> so I will see y'all 
in the next clip. Later. I'm gonna have to take my jacket off. Huh? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Hey y'all, welcome to another session in my car. I really wasn't gonna pick up the camera, I don't know when. I decided to take a few days off from work just to regroup. I was originally supposed to go on vacation with Makeda and Shannon, like a little girl trip to Tennessee, but I ended up getting a second job as a bottle girl because y'all i need extra extra money and i need to make things shake expect oh can i talk damn especially because after learning how to navigate adulthood for the last two years when it comes to paying bills and texas requirements when it comes to car registrations and all of that the first few months of the year of the new year is always the most stressful for me so i was like in order to not touch my savings in order to not deplete myself of my funds and my energy number one my energy is i need more money to fix my problems so i got a second job as a bottle girl which i'm so excited for because it's not a easy job but it's also not hard you know, I my uniform's cute, I get to do my makeup, I get paid extra for being cute and pretty. And, oh, that's such a pretty dog. And I could basically just work a good amount of money in a few hours or one night. So that's that. So I'm hoping by the beginning of the year, the beginning of the year, I could outsource more of my work so I don't have to extend so much energy of, of getting things done on my own, as well as saving up for some new plans that I have. And also why I even got this second job is to distract me from overthinking because so many things happened in October to the first couple days of November that were just so stressful and I, a new job and more money fixes everything. I looked at my therapist, I was like, even if I'm stressed out, I'd rather cry and wipe my tears with more money. <laughs> so that's what I've been up to. I just came out to run errands and see, this is how you know I did not anticipate on doing too much because I did not even feel like gelling my hair and putting a straightener through it. So I, I put on this head scarf and I'm wearing like my wide my ultra wide leg denim and my ufos sandals if you care to know my outfit it was just going to be a day of errands and take myself out to dinner or a quick little lunch and not stay in the house all day but the most craziest thing happened because where was i going with this oh i definitely feel like oh that car is nice <gasps> is, that is that the car, the car i had, I had on, on my, my wish list I also got an upside down latte from La La Land. Upside down latte, yeah, that's what it is, with almond milk. But what, what was I saying? 
Oh, I feel like I have outgrown my place. Not feel, I know I out, I've outgrown my place that I'm at now. The thing is, when I first moved to Texas, I didn't see my first apartment. And I told myself, even if I don't like it, which I didn't, I signed a really short lease, like a six month lease to give me enough time to learn Texas. Basically prepare myself for the new place that I would want. And say six to eight months of being fresh in Dallas, I, some advice, always read your leasing documents, especially for my newbies or my young ladies i my audience is mainly women but if you to anyone really if you are getting your first apartment and you're also looking to move read your leasing agreement i did not do that so i ended up getting stuck in a month to month lease after my lease ended i thought it wasn't gonna auto renew, but it clearly stated that. So that is my mistake. My lease auto renewed and I was like, dang, I don't wanna be here. And if you know about auto renewals, these apartments are gonna come back for blood. Okay, the upcharge for month to month rent, insane. Hey y'all, I made it home but my video cut off because i ran out of space i ran out of memory but i'm home and i'm trying out this new microphone thing so hopefully i don't have to re-record the audio because my dishwasher is on and i felt like that would have been obnoxious in the video but what i was saying is please read your lease so you're not stuck in a situation i was stuck in because pain month to month was kind of ridiculous nonetheless i got out that lease got my new place and i've basically outgrown it but that's leading into an experience I had today. Mind you, I was contemplating on if I even wanted to leave the house or just take myself out. I ended up not going to dinner because it got dark and rush hour was annoying. <laughs> so I stopped at Chick-fil-A, got a quick meal. I had that and then just came home after I ran my errands. Today was kind of crazy. I feel like this is the confirmation I was looking for or the validation of some of my thoughts and plans because as I said, I was not 100% planning on leaving the house, but I was driving around town and I am looking at places. I have been looking at places to move for the last couple months because this time after my two apartments i decided that or i want to do this the correct way where i want to plan ahead of time and not rush for this next move i want to scope out neighborhoods i want to scope out floor plans and Pretty much everything that comes with getting a new place i don't want to rush that process like i did with my last two apartments not that anything's bad but i want this to really be the place where i can feel even more comfortable than i do now because even with this current place i had plans to fully redecorate back in june it is now november and i didn't do anything Okay, I may have gotten some new curtains and bedding, but it still doesn't feel like home to me. So I halted all of that because I'm like, if I'm gonna move again, I don't want to have a bunch of things to transport or trans, yeah, to transport. So I halted the decorating at this place until I get my other place. And even though this is a new build, the crazy part is i thought i did a thorough clean when i moved into this place and it wasn't until months later i swabbed my cabinets only to realize there was still sawdust so that is another thing for my next place i want to be able to not worry about time and not fork out unnecessary funds that i could have avoided by thoroughly going through all my agreements and contracts 
and I want to book a cleaner and a cleaning service. My next apartment, I don't want to worry about anything. I just want it to be smooth sailing. I don't want to be stressed out. I don't want to be frazzled. I want to feel comfortable and just unpack everything at least within one week because the last two places, it took me weeks to maybe even three months to settle in and unpack and figure out what I wanted to do and how I wanted to set up my new life. I don't want any of that stress to follow me to my new place. I toured somewhere today and I feel like that might be my, my next true home. We don't know yet. I had plans, we don't know yet. However, this leads into the experience I had today. Let's start out, I'm a girl that loves to treat myself. I am a treat yourself girl. I'm a treat myself whenever I can. But today I was contemplating, I was like, do I want coffee? Because it's about to be four in the evening. Do I want coffee? Do I not get coffee? But I still want a little sweet treat. After touring the new place, I was like, you know what? Let me get coffee. And here's the confirmation as well. For months, my locator was helping me look for a place. And this time I'm trying to do it without an agent because I feel like the agents now are a little misleading or, you know, they get an incentive for recommending people to certain places. And some of the places I don't like or they're just way too expensive. I took it upon myself this time to take the time to tour places. So when it comes to look or sign a new lease, I am 100% comfortable. I am 100% confident, okay? I toured this place. It was really nice. The leasing agent, super high energy, really fun, really cool. But I've been through so many that I could kind of catch game. There's also something I change when looking for apartments is to ask residents because those reviews lie. Okay, if you're looking at this and you're looking to get your first place, take your time as what I'm doing right now. Take your time. Learn from me go back to that property a few days throughout the week to see how the neighbors or the environment operates. If it's by a school zone, you might want to check out if traffic builds up or if there's another road you could get on to curb traffic or is it rowdy on the weekends? What are your neighbors like? This time I'm leaving and the leasing agent was like, oh, you could come back. We'll invite you to some events so you can scope out the complex and the community a bit more. She was like, with that, you can mingle with the residents. Tell me how. As soon as I turn around, a resident pulled up and she was like, girl, I love it here. Move here. Introduce herself, everything. So I look back at the leasing agent and I was like, oh my goodness. She was like, I know, like, this is your sign. <laughs> that alone made me feel comfortable and pushed them up to my number one choice. I got in my car after doing the tour and talking to that resident. And I said, you know what, I'll just go get coffee. I walked into the coffee shop. There's a poster board at this coffee shop where they will list their seasonal drinks because I didn't see it on the menu. So I said, you know what? I'll just cut across the store, go outside and check out the display to see if they updated their holiday flavors. I'm about to go inside and this guy comes up to me and he was like, I love your spirit. That compliment took me for such a huge surprise. It's not out of the ordinary. I have had people say they love my energy, they love my demeanor and all of that, but he came in so strong and he said, your spirit, everything, I love it. He said so many other things, but I forgot because I was just so stunned. And we started to have a conversation. Mind you, I don't know this man, never met him in my life. And he said he was praying and he prayed for help and got a message. And you know, for me, there's part of me that's okay, this could be a coincidence or 
he's just a very good reader. Like he could see how I'm dressed and how I carry myself. And he could put together a profile, almost like a gimmick to try to get to me for something. Or it's genuine, spiritual. At this point, I'm like, okay, I'm all ears to the you know, scope what you're trying to say, but I'll still, I'll still be a little on, on edge. And he said, do you do a podcast? And I was like, no, I don't, but I do YouTube. And he said, your gift and your talents are going to be out of this world. I don't exactly remember what he said word for word, but he was basically confirming that I am on the right path. And he said, whatever you are looking for, your new place is gonna come by very soon. I was like, my new place? What you mean my new place? I, I just toured somewhere. And I remember while driving, I was in doubt, but I said, I love this place so much that I'll do whatever it takes to get it. And I remember before I left, the resident was like, girl, I wasn't convinced, but I got my money together and I love it here. So putting all of that together and then meeting this random man and he's giving me confirmation about my new home. I was like, okay, I'm all ears. What, what else you got to say? And he was like, once you get your new place, you're going to get a new car. I was like, <laughs> what you mean I'm going to get a new car? It was such a crazy experience, but I remember being in the car and I told my friends, I was like, girls, I don't know if I want to keep this car or what not. But having my car since college, and if you watch my videos, you kind of get a hang of my lifestyle. I love going out. I love a new adventure. I love new experiences. You even watch my vlogs. I have driven across the country in this car. Ever since Florida, I have been driving up and down the East Coast in this car. <laughs> um, even if I work from home, literally, I'm gonna find a reason to drive after work. If I see that there's something on TikTok and it's an hour away and I wanna try this event or well, experience this event or try new food, I'm gonna pick up my car, I'm gonna pick up my keys, I'm gonna hop in that car and I'm gonna drive. Okay. This man read me like a book. And if you watched my last vlog, you would also know that I had a rough patch that I kind of went on a rant about with relationships and isolating that kind of led into feeling lonely, but I'm keeping it optimistic. That phase of life could be temporary. It is a little bit because a few friends have come back around and a couple family members came back around as well. But he was like, this is a period of loneliness, but it's nothing you can't get past. Like, you got this, just keep pushing. I was like, yo, what? Such a crazy experience. Nonetheless, that chat with him, his name's Alan, that chat with him was very eye-opening. I have no idea what will come from today's experience but I will say it provided the comfort and confirmation I needed, as well as the motivation to keep pursuing what I want to pursue. I have plans, I have goals. It's just a matter of getting to them eventually. <laughs> I've had some crazy experiences with people, but this one, especially in the time frame I'm in, or the chapter I'm in of my life. It was almost magical. I don't know what else to say. I'm taking this as my confirmation that everything will be okay. He also stated that he sees that I am inspiration to others and I should not give up. And I kind of knew that. I just haven't fully articulated it, but growing up, I was always the influential friend in my group, in my friend groups. I'm always 
taking my friends or giving my friends new experiences or even family new experiences and introducing new concepts, whether that's food, lifestyle, advice, fashion, self-care, affirmation, anything. I know someone somewhere is or are watching and gaining some inspiration from my videos. I have that notion, but I don't know to what extent. So I'll also place, I hope I'm of inspiration. This is probably about to be a very long video. I don't know where to end. I don't know. Maybe comment down below on what you think that experience with this guy might have meant or if you're going through a similar situation of making new decisions and trying to figure out what you want to do in the next chapter of your life. My last vlog was such a storm and crazy enough, this vlog is more the calm after the storm. I feel like everything is settling and whatever chaos and turmoil I was going through and the decisions I had to make within that time frame, it's pretty much all paying off. I guess I'll just end by saying keep pushing, believe in yourself, um, live your life for you, for you. Be responsible, be proactive, be hopeful, be optimistic. Read your contracts before you sign them. Mm -hmm. Don't be like me. Don't be like me. <laughs> Don't be like me. And I will catch you in my next video. Oh my gosh. This is crazy. That man read me like a book. Yeah. <laughs>